Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo. In this part 2 of creating a Netflix intro inside of Blender and After Effects, we're gonna talk about the After Effects part, which is the more magical part and the exciting one. And so I hope you're really excited about this part as I am. I love After Effects, I love creating subframes, so let's jump right into it. All right, well, here we are inside of After Effects and I already imported all my passes. So let's just take a look at these. So we have the river in gold, we have a mask noise, we have some ground, the dot that we talked about, and the asteroid mark. All right, let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the main ground. I'll just put it here. And honestly, I feel like this is a little bit too bright, but first we need to fix this thing here. So I'm just gonna make a new solid. I'm gonna make it black. By the way, I'm using 32 bits color channel, so make sure you're in the same. And uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna double click to create a mask at the same size of my solid and holding control, I'll be able to drag both sides. So I'm just gonna make it like this and subtract. So now I have this uh, Hollywood stripes, just like I like to call them. So I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna say Hollywood stripes and then just lock it because I'm never gonna use it anymore. So now we have framed our main style frame. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to get the best color correction that I'm looking for. And uh, to do that, there is nothing better than actually creating an adjustment layer. I'm gonna call this CC, standing for color correction. Now with the CC on, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call in Lumetri. Well, Lumetri, the reason I use it is just to get a LUT, and which is a color lookup table. And basically what it is, is just color preset. And the one I kind of used here is SL cross HDR, this one here. And as you can see, it's way too, it, it blues if everything and that's not really what I'm looking for and so I'm just gonna go and just get a little bit of that contrast and blue a little bit of that effect just a little bit cool and once that is done the next thing I'm gonna do is try to make the bright the the the, the darkness more dark so we're just gonna crunch it a bit so I'm just gonna go and call in the curves and uh, the only thing I'm gonna do is just crush it a little bit like this, right? and drag this a bit up so that the bright part are still bright so just a little bit, not too much. Cool. So that's what I was looking for. And the reason I darkened it, just so that we can have that glow of the river as well as the astral mark way more prominent than it is. And so that we can put the focus on that. We don't really want to focus on the mountain. Mountain is not really our test subject. It's more of a, an environment. But what's happening in the astral and the animations of it needs to be in focus. All right. So once that is done, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to bring in sharpen just because I feel like we lost a lot of details because of the render quality and so just so that you can see here I'm gonna go full resolution and I'm just gonna add a little bit so you can see that I'm just sharpening the edge and that's really important especially that later on we're gonna add the mark and the details of the mark needs to be prominent and uh, in the face of people so this is pretty good so you can see the difference from a blurry render to a pretty much well defined edges and uh, details and so that's so that's pretty much it the one thing I like to do because I don't like to render the bloom from my 3D softwares, either be it Cinema 4D or Blender. And so what I like to do then is just create a deep glow and uh, that will create a bloom for me. It's not something that people like to do, but I just like to do it that way. And so I'm just gonna go and turn this down. So you just create this little, it's, it's very subtle, but uh, yeah, it just creates that small bloom effect. And uh, once that's done, one thing that you will realize in, in cinematic renders and uh, in intros, and one of the things that Netflix likes to do and uh, cinematic stuff as a whole is just add a little bit of a noise. And to do that, it's either you use a texture or you use a noise effect. And then you just come here and uh, you can see that if I increase this, I'll start having this noise, but this is too much. So I'm just gonna go and put two, all right? So then you have that. You can see that we have that very realistic Look. All right, so that is done. Let's uh, take care of some more passes. All right, let's uh, get a little bit of colors here. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna bring in our river. So this is our river pass. So we'll just go and put it on our composition like this. So we wanna get rid of the black. So we're gonna superpose it using the screen. So we're not gonna use the light values. Great, so what are we gonna do with this right now? I think it's a little bit too bright. It's taken pretty much the entire focus of the frame. And what I want is just to be there, but not really scream at my face. And to do that, I'm gonna 
fix that with a little bit of curves. So I'm just going to go and try to limit this a little bit. The shadows, just bring them down, take the bright part and literally just have something like that. And so as you can see, the difference between before and after. So now only the bright part, the brightest of the brightest are going to be a little bit there. But they're not going to be as bright as before. And the dark part in the mountains where it's dark, they won't be shining as well. So that's a pretty good balance between the two. And one thing that I don't like, I like the gold here. I like that we have a little bit of texture gold going on, but I don't like the color of it compared to this color lot preset that we went for. It, it just doesn't fit. And to, to do a fix there, I'm going to use a tint. So tints use all your values and just give them two colors and uh, darkest becomes black and the brightest become white. But what I'm looking for is just to get this color right here. So the value of it, you can just copy it and paste it there. And now you're going to get this very tasty, sharp gold amber kind of color, which is really on par with the kind of storytelling we we're going for. All right, now let's take care of the mark because that's gonna be the decided factor or how we're gonna go with this composition. So remember, we want this to be a tata sequence, which is gonna be moving just like I showed you in the animation for Blender tutorial. If you've missed that, please go back and watch the tutorial. And if you're just creating a style frame just like me, you can just follow up. So now we wanna create an astral mark glowing in here, just like a population of some sort, a civilization of some sort that is advanced or it could be even old as well. And we just wanna put the title here of the director, which we're just going to put in this side because it's dark and it's on the other third of the image. So the right third of the image, we're going to have the main object, which is the astral that we're going to create now. And the other side of the third of the image, we're going to leave it as dark as it is just for the title. Cool. Let's get the, let's get the mark. So we're just going to go and look for the mark, which is this one. So I'm just going to go and put it here. Great. And if I go and put it into, let's just say add, we're going to be able to see it. That's pretty good. The, the cool thing about this is that it's not really flat. And that's why we left the displacement. So you can see that it's not really flat. It's actually bulging with the mountains. So that's the reason why we kept everything with the displacement. And now that we have our astral here, I'm going to go and try to remove the black part. So let's take a look here. If I just try to color this right now, and uh, let's just say, I want to color it with some gradient wrap. So what's going to happen here? Even if we do a screen, what's going to happen? The entire image is going to be filled because it's full. There is no, it's not really cut. The alpha is not really there. And so to fix this, I need to remove the black myself. And so to do that, I'm just going to go call in linear color key and just remove the black. And so this way, all the black is going to be removed. And then I'm just going to have the colors now with the color gradient where they are. And so I'm going to put the black here and then I'm going to put the brightest part somewhere here. Great. So black and then for the gold, I'm going to use the same value that I use for the river here. So I'll just make sure you get this value and I'm just going to put it here. Cool. And now if I do a screen, I'll be able to see that. And just to get a better high Highlights, I'm just going to do add. So each value will be added instead of just superposed on top. Cool. So uh, that's uh, pretty much it. And uh, obviously we can make things glow even better using deep glow. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the difference is pretty stellar. And uh, all I could do here is just go and make this very, very, very low. Cool. Now let's create that very crispy texture of the mark that we're going to make it so obvious. So I'm going to duplicate this and make sure that the opacity is 100%. And then I'm going to pre-compose and make sure that I leave all, uh, I move all the attributes inside. So here we are inside that astral ground. Okay, so I'm going to go inside and this is what I have. Cool. So I'm just going to lock it. And uh, what I need, I wish if I could find a way where I could just eat a bit of how this looks like. I don't want everything to be shiny because that's not how real world actually works. And so to fix that, I'm going to go and bring in this mask noise. If you don't have this mask noise, you can just get it on the texture file. So you can get it from the link below. And so I'm going to go and make sure that this here uses this. And to do that, I'm going to make sure that the track mat is looking at that. But I'm not really having anything because the entire layer edges are being looked at. And so far, that's what that's what alpha mat means. It looks at the edges of a layer. And right now the layer is full, but that's not what I want. I want the true value of black and white. And if I just do this, I'll be able to see the true value. And I wish if I could just invert this and now 
I'll be able to see the true values of that. Now we kind of have a little problem because the curvature of this this mask noise is not really that strong. So I'm just going to go and do a little bit of a do a little bit of a change to it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to call in a linear color key and I'm going to kill in the black spots. Cool. And so if you look at it, all right, and then I'm going to create a curve and then I'm going to play with how this looks like so that it can affect only the parts where I want this to be prominent. And so I'm just going to go and start doing something crazy like this. Now that I'm playing with the values, there we go. Cool. All right. So without it, everything is apparent. And now I'll only have this parts that are apparent. Cool. And if we go back to our composition, now we have this. Now the only thing I need to do is just screen this. So you can see there is a huge difference if I don't do that. So now we have this only on some parts. And then because of the thing that we created before, it's there, but it's not fully lit in, which makes this a little bit more special than just using this as this. All right. So one thing I did when I was creating the cell frame was I noticed that because of the mountains, I wanted to make these disappear. It's like if this mark is not fully on the entire terrain. So whenever there is a mountain, it kind of disappears from the top of the mountains. And so to do that, it was very simple. I could either do that inside of Blender and try to remove it from the displacement, but that would be too much of a stretch. And so to do that with everything that I just have here, I'll just duplicate this mountain and let's just focus on this for a bit. So all I need to do, I can see that the mountain, the high top of the mountains, they are really bright. So if I can find a way to just eat the bright part way that would fix it wouldn't it and so to do that we have a lot of tools we can use inside of after effects i'm gonna first tint this to make sure that it's only black and white and it's not blue and it's not affected by any color coming from the 3d software and image that we rendered now that i have true black and white values i'm gonna go and play with curves and the reason i'm gonna play with curves is just i want to make sure that i'm gonna lose as much as the difference between the bright and the black part as possible, like as much as I can help. So that looks okay. And since this is all right, I'm just gonna go and do the final part, which is eat the black part. And so I'm just gonna go and eat the black parts. That's what's happening. So it was pretty cool. Great. And now all I need to do, so just for an example, I'm just going to go and put this onto this. All right. But now it's only giving me on the bright part. And then I'm going to say, no, just give me on the black part. And that's pretty much how it's done. All right. So even if I put normal, cool. All right. And now I'm just going to do the same thing for this one. Just take this alpha mat invert. So what that means is that as you can see here, whenever there is a top of the mountain, it just eats it, but it's still affected by the displacements. And that that's the beauty of this technique. Now, it would be really great if we could help focus more on this because we don't really want to see this part and this part of the frame. We just want to focus here and focus on the text. So how are we going to do that? We're going to blur a little bit. So creating a new adjustment layer, I'm going to call this blur. I'm going to call in camera lens blur. So now you can see what's that going to do. So I'm just going to turn it off until I mask because the camera lens blur is pretty heavy on the rendering. And so I'm just going to make a little bit like this just a little bit cool and since i'm gonna have the text here so i just want to eat less from there great so this looks uh, pretty all right i would say put this like this cool and uh, let's get back to camera lens blur well now it's actually blurring on the wrong way and i'm just gonna go press m to bring up mask and then subtract now if i subtract you can see that it's pretty sharp so i'm just gonna go and play with the feather to make sure that it really blends in that's great see now we're just focusing here and that's that's pretty what i was looking for right but the blur is a little bit too much so i'm just gonna go to 1.5 or something like that just, just a little bit so you can see the difference you see so it just helps you really focus in here and you can play play with whatever you feel like. But I think that's not really necessary for now because we just got from it what we really needed. And now with, I'm just going to go and bring in my title, which uh, I've already done, which is basically just a font that I created for this title sequence. It's very basic uh, using Sinzel a font, which is free font. And uh, yeah, you can just drag it in the composition like this should be fine. So I want to put it on top of everything because I don't want it really to be a affected by the, the blur and by the color correction because it has its own. Cool. Now let's let's get a little bit of work done for the title, shall we? All right. So back in our title. So we're going to create two titles, one and you'll see why. So I'm going to duplicate this and hide the first one. Now for this one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to ramp it 
make a good beautiful gradient just like what we have for our mark and to do that I'm gonna call in gradient ramp and I'm just gonna get this here and get this somewhere here cool and for the gold I'm gonna use exactly the same gold as before so this now that is done I'm gonna try to get a little bit of a texture going on here so I'm just gonna go and do a roughen edge so what roughen edge does it just eats from a certain texture or certain layer so as you can see here you can even animate this if you want to animate this intro so that's one thing that you can play with cool and so I'm just gonna go to something like two not too much just something like that and I think the scale of eating on these is a little bit too much so I'm just gonna solo it so just that I can work a little bit better so it's like fractal noise the le the smaller the scale the more details you're gonna have like this and so I'm just gonna go and go into something like 24 25 Cool. And the complexity, you can just play with it just to see how much details you want to eat. So I think this is pretty beautiful. It's like the gold texture that we created inside of Blender. And uh, once that once that is good, just try to do a little bit of that lumetry that we created. So we just wanted to actually blend in with the color correction without having the it being affected with everything that we've created. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, pretty much. Just get this, just get deep glow. No, we could actually just get the curve sharpen and dip go out. Cool. And I'm just gonna go and put it here. And now we have this, which is pretty cool. All right, so now if you look at it, this is what we have, but I believe it's because of dip glow. This is a text, so it needs to be checked. Great, but the thing is now, we don't really read the director by, and that's why I duplicated this. So if I put it behind, we'll be able to see, but then it's it's not really the same color. So let's just go and get the same color and paste it here, cool. So now that we pasted that, all I need to do is turn down the the opacity. All right. So when I get something like this, I can still see the texture. See, I can still see the texture, but I won't be able to see to to not read it. I think the one thing that I could do is just put this a little bit far away. There we go. And we're just going to put this far away a little bit so that we can see directed by. Basically, that's it. Yeah, you created the soft frame. And now all you have to do is just put it as a sequence animation, just like we did in Blender, and you'll be having yourself a ready Netflix title sequence. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do not forget to hit that subscribe and like button and put the notification bell on so that you can receive more tutorials. And so also you could help me and help others so that this video can reach them because maybe people are really looking on how to create this. If you would like to learn more and get more deep dives into how to create things in After Effects and Blender, please make sure you check the links below. And I also have a Patreon where I share exclusive behind the scenes things that I can't really have time to post here and things that are way too long to to commentary on and uh, you can find them on my Patreon and also if you like to have more perks please just check my Patreon page out. My name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo and I really cannot wait to see you guys on the next one. It's big.